Foundation's fight for an Alzheimer's cure. She would love what's going on in women's college basketball these days. This winter, it's a Pac-12 party. UCLA and Utah set to get after it. The latest bracketology says the conference has three number one seeds right now. And we'll find out how that plays out over the next six weeks. Here is how the standings look with Colorado and Stanford. Just one loss in that column. UCLA is right on their heels. The Bruins come out tonight at number two in the latest rankings, the highest in school history. Hi, everybody. Beth Mullins, Debbie Antonelli, and boy, would Coach Summit love to watch these two teams get after it, Debbie. Two very efficient offenses. I mean, are you kidding me? Both these teams can score at a high clip. They're very efficient on the offensive end. Pat might have liked a little bit more defense, but forget it. We, we like a team that can pass it and score it, and that's what we've got tonight. She would love to see the growth of the game of one Alyssa Peely, who is the reigning Pac-12 player of the year. Peely is one one of the more unguardable players in the nation. She always makes the defense wrong. She's coming off a 37-point performance, her third 30-plus game of the season, and she can score at all three levels. In the paint with her back to the basket, she's got the go-to and the counter, and then from the three-point side, she can knock down triples. She's an excellent passer. She defends the rim. She stays out of foul trouble. She's got the entire skill set, and she is really fun to watch. The Bruins come to town with not one good scorer, Debbie, but five of them on the floor at one time. This is what you can appreciate about the number two team in the nation. They pass it, they share it, they space it. They're an elite level cutting team. They all have an ability to impact with their roles. They can shoot it as well. Five players in double figures one of 10 teams in the country to have five players that can score in double figures. And that last one, Jaquez, comes off the bench. The Bruins coming off a win on Friday night against Colorado, ranked number three in the country. That's the highest ranked opponent that they've ever beaten. They're coming in on a high, and so is Utah with Lynn Roberts, a 20-point dismantling of number six USC in their last outing. One of her best friends in the business is on the other side, Corey Close, 12 years for the Bruins. Both these teams were in the Sweet 16 a year ago, both with expectations of going farther this time around. Terrific offensive rebounding teams because they take shots that they know they're going to take. And defending the three-point line for both sides will be really important. Nobody makes more threes in the country than Utah. 11 per game. And already we see the other big story. Nobody has the size for Utah of 6'7 Lauren Betts and how they counter her in the middle. And there's a three ball. And the first one is up and in from Janet Johnson. One of the pieces of the offensive game plan for Utah is to move Lauren Betts around. It's 6-7. Utah has to get her out of the paint. She's too good of a shot blocker. They got to make her move her feet on the perimeter. Angela Dugalich, the turnaround off the window. Oh, how about the fadeaway off the glass? She's coming off a double-double in that win over Colorado. This could be uh, all the way to the last possession. I'm not sure either team really has the ability to stop the other. They're both so efficient and balanced in the way they score the basketball. Yeah, both of them are uh, over 80 per game. Both of them pass the ball very well. Their assist numbers, in fact, Utah's best in the country at that. Vieta on the drive and gets the home roll. Really good spacing, everyone outside the arc, working four out, one in. But here's what UCLA can do. Go inside to 6-7. That is tough to counter on Utah's defense. Betts misses her first attempt. Utah on the run. Let's see if they get Peely involved this trip. No, I'll try another three. And Jenna Johnson is shooting 42% from outside the three-point line. That's your five player. Jones from the corner. London off the mark. And London is the best three-point shooter for UCLA. She's made 42 threes this season for the Bruins. Peely, Betts has to come out because Alyssa can shoot the three and they force the turnover. 
Dugalich going to take it the distance. She's got all four of their points. The ball pressure by Betts at 6-7. High hands on the catch on Peely. And this is a 6-7 that can really run the floor. You got to come all the way out and guard Peely, Beth, because she will pull it from three. Johnson off the hesitation. Betts makes her turn away. And she'll find the three shooter. And she Senior out of Jonesboro, Arkansas. If you watch UCLA on the weak side defensively, they are off of Young. She's not the best three-point shooter. She's the fifth option for Utah outside the arc. There's Kiki Rice. Dugalich aggressive to the rim early on. She's got all six. Go two-man to the naked side of the floor. Young, nice hesitation. And Rice is there for the block. Kiki's the sophomore from Maryland who was the prep national player of the year two seasons ago. This is a terrific drive right here. And then Young, you see the help on the penetration. And then on the other end, good take inside. That's that spacing that I'm talking about that UCLA brings with their five players on the floor that can score. Peely, now with a different defender on her. Go with a little bit smaller lineup. Vieta pitches to the corner. Around and out, Young offensive rebound. Gets him another possession. Gets him another look from deep. This one goes. Kennedy McQueen, who has the best three-point percentage in the conference. The ultimate green light, right? How fun to play in that style. Big turnaround for Lynn Roberts over the last couple of seasons. Oh, she was the coach of the year last year in the conference as Rice has it blocked out of bounds. There's a look at the big pickup was, of course, Peely, the senior from Alaska, who transferred in from Southern Cal and turned around her life, turned around her career on the basketball court. Coach told us she lives for these big kinds of games, these big moments. All you got to do is look at her resume. Her career highs this season of 37 against Southern Cal and South Carolina, two top 10 foes. Rice connects on the first. Hey, Thursday, speaking of that South Carolina side, the remaining unbeaten. And they've got a tough road test down in Baton Rouge. College game day will be there for the Gamecocks and the defending national champion Tigers. Coverage tips on ESPN at 7 o'clock. Both teams average over 90 points a game. Both teams have five players in double figures. Oh, yeah. Two of those other 10 teams. Kind of sides UCLA. Got a feeling that'll live up to the hype. That's probably yeah. the regular season game of the year. Mardi Gras started down there, or is it always Mardi Gras? That's what I thought. Little king cake action. Somebody's gonna get that baby. Reese Ross, freshman from Rapid City, South Dakota. Number one recruit out of that state. A terrific start here for the Utes. And that's gonna be an offensive foul on Rice. Really good ball pressure by Vieta. This is a really good job. And watch the ball movement right here. You get the attack inside, the counter on the paint. Very nice. Starting out shooting 62% from the floor. With three triples, and there's the turnover. Charisma Osborne, their 2,000 point scorer, will add to that total. Live ball turnover in front of Charisma Osborne. Forget about it. There's no chance that pass was getting in there. The bounce inside, trying to take advantage perhaps of some paint play here without Betts on the floor. Off the dribble and runs into a double. Young steps back outside and that's for the Brown for Utah. How about Daisy Young proving that she can knock him down if UCLA's gonna help off of her. She's stuck two triples so far in the first quarter. Scouting report, Debbie says she's only a 25% yes. shooter from out exactly. there. Changing the narrative. Off the bounce, Hawkins. 
may recognize the name. Her brother having a terrific rookie campaign in the NBA. But it's the Utes early on. The live ball turnover. Osborne with the pick. Rims Welcome back to the Pac-12 on ESPN. And Debbie, when you need a big win and your team needs to play a little more physical, maybe a coach does something like this. Let's go! Okay. <laughs> in history in terms of a ranked opponent. Oh, by the way, who told her that that might be a good idea? Well, her good friend and her opponent today, Lynn Roberts, who said she, on occasion, will get out the football helmet to fire her team up. You think that number 23 was for Hawkins? <laughs> She's probably one of their toughest players. Well, they can use some of that right now because Utah's off to a hot start. They've Hit six of their first nine shots and lead things 16 to 10. Still no Peely on the floor who has not taken any shots. Their leading scorer. And it's a long sit too for Betts as well on the other bench. Either one's in foul trouble. Here's Charisma Osborne to London Jones quickly up the floor and she'll get to the rim. UCLA, UCLA defensive rebounds 79% of the other team's misses. That is a high number, and part of the reason why they do that is because they do such a good job of ball pressure, they keep you out of rotation, and then they hit the glass, and then their team speed going the other way is really impactful on the game. Christine Wallet defending here on Izzy Palmer, who is a full go for Utah. Coming back from a long layoff, she played nine minutes the other night in the USC win and had been in the starting lineup to open up the year. This is just her fifth game of the season, fifth game playing. And here is Palmer bringing it up the floor. They've, and they've essentially got two point guards now, her and Vieta. Nearly <laughs> stolen on the perimeter. in the USC win the other night. I think she is going to be a really good player here for Lynn Roberts. She sees the floor well. She can score. High IQ with the ball in her hands. A good decision maker. Hawkeyes with a nice entry pass. Iwala couldn't finish. Both Betts and Peely getting set to check back in at the next whistle. Palmer missed the uncontested lay-in. Osborne. Uwala blocked. That's three consecutive possessions they've gone inside, and she has not been able to finish. Once was a double, the other was a missed shot. Looks like fatigue is playing a role right now. Could be the altitude. Ross tips it to herself and gets the putback timeout Bruins. An eight-point lead without Alyssa Pilly, their leading scorer, even taking a shot in the game. Good offensive rebound. In this is the star power that walked into the gym earlier tonight. Lauren Betts for UCLA, Alyssa Pilly for Utah. Neither able to get it going just yet, but both have checked back into the game after a quick breather. And now they're going one-on-one. That's it, they kick it out to Rice. That's a really good double when you can keep the ball on the same side of the floor because you load your defense to the strong side. Vieta off the bounce, taken away. Fourth Utah turnover, Rice caught from behind and Vieta able to knock it out. Really good quickness and closing speed. Good hustle. On the inbound, Hawkins 
The first miss, the second one no, and a foul. Both coaches spent an enormous amount of time on situational defense, guarding out of bounds plays. Let's see if they can get things going at the line. They've missed seven of the last eight shots from the floor. And Gabriella hits the free throw. Hey, coming up later tonight on ESPN, Kansas and Cincinnati. Out at the five, the action gets underway in Lawrence at nine Eastern. Kansas coming off a loss. Yeah, West Virginia got them. They're three and two in the league. Right now they're at two seed, according to Joe Lennon. Nice off the bounce for Wilkie. Now there's been chaos on both the men's and women's side. Was it last week for the women? Five of the top 11 lost, and now this past weekend, both USC and Florida State losing twice as we get deeper into league play. Marquez misses the wrap. Utah, a chance to go up double digits. Peely with Betts defending, gave up the dribble. Switch. Shot clock down to five, got a boost. Rookie, they find a three point shooter. Google has it. Rice checks the clock, they can hold for one. Instead, it's Betts with a catch and a layup. One of the things that 6'7 Lauren Betts does exceptionally well is if you watch her bet, her first three steps up the court in transition are boom, boom, boom. I mean, she digs. Shot at the buzzer, won't go. And Utah with the early lead over number two, UCLA. 22 to 16 tonight in Salt Lake. Welcome back to Salt Lake. How about UCLA's all-time career scoring leaders? Well, current Bruin Charisma Osborne is fourth on that list. Look at who's number one, though. Denise Curry with over 3,500 points and a national champion back in the late 80s. We mentioned Denise not only because she was a stud on the basketball court, but she was also United States Olympian in 1984, where her coach in Los Angeles was... Pat Summit. There you go. Pat, not only the eight-time national champion coach at Tennessee and the Hall of Famer, but also got in the United States to its first Olympic gold medal. And of course, we back Pat all week long on our basketball platforms, the mission to help support the Pat Summit Foundation, which advances research for treatment and a cure to provide care and support for patients and caregivers that are dealing with the Alzheimer's disease. She's got a game plan playbook coming out for caregivers, yes. and to this date, they've awarded over $4 million to nonprofits and researchers across the country. So her legacy is eight national championships, but there's more to Pat than just basketball and winning. Yeah, her legacy, her foundation doing amazing things. Alyssa Peely, who has yet to attempt a shot, and there's her first one of the night. Coming off a 37-point outing against USC a few nights ago. Can't go over the top of Betts. You gotta go around her. That's with the catch and the kick. Cameron Brown, short corner. No. Angela Dugalich is uh, three for three. The rest of the team is now three for 13. Young is set up. Her ability to go off the bounce because she's knocked down a couple of triples. Pass picked off. That's already five turnovers. Yeah, that pass has no chance of getting there. Betts is pointing where she wants the entry pass to come to from. She points to Rice. They immediately bring the double and Kiki makes him pay. So as soon as Kiki Rice throws the pass into Betts, she relocates to the slot area on the same side of the floor. Her defender helped. That's a tough recovery angle. Really good shot by Rice. Kiki with a couple of double doubles and a triple double on the resume this year. And it's a terrific first half so far for Deja Young. 
Deja Young averages seven points a game, Beth. She's already at eight. Three for four from the floor. Hitting the over here in the first half. Oviedo really making it tough for Rice to get the ball. Already down to 10 on the shot right. clock. That takes up time on the shot clock. And a foul committed by Peely on Dugalich. When you're a team that relies very much off the pass and is a rhythm shooting team like UCLA is, Utah's done a good job early on being disruptive, especially here at home. But they've turned the ball over too much as Utah. Dugalich, 68% free throw shooter, started out her career at Oregon. Missed all of last season, and a big addition to a lineup that is without Emmy uh, Beswar out with an injury. Both of these teams lost a big piece to an ACL this year. For UCLA, they started the season 14 and 0, already three top 10 wins. And you see the balance that they have put together. Their resume right now, you can put up against anybody's in the country. Number 21, Lena I agree, Beth. They've got five wins in the net over top 25, one through 25 wins, right? It's a piece of criteria the NCAA looks at. Right now, Charlie Cream has them sitting on the one line. Peely trying to get aggressive and draws the foul on Betts. Well, one of the things that Peely has worked on uh -huh. is pulling Betts away from the bucket Rolling so she can take her off the bounce. Here are what will be the most impressive first resumes right now with what, about six weeks still to go. Line. A lot of time in the regular season, but of course, South Carolina undefeated. They have the number one net. But when you look at UCLA, their strength of schedule is one of the best in the country. And UCLA and Stanford right now have the most wins against the top 25 net. Those numbers could go up because of how strong the league is right now and how many top 25 ranked teams there are in the Pac-12. Got a handful of them right now. Well, the Pac-12 has got UCLA at two, Colorado three, Stanford six, USC at 11, even coming off of back-to-back yeah. -back losses. Utah 16, and Oregon State moved into the poll on a loss to Stanford. Rice spins short. Of course, that Stanford win was Tara Vanderveer's record setter as she passed Mike Krzyzewski on the college basketball all-time wins list, going up to number one. Congratulations to Tara. Really big congratulations to Tara to become the all-time wins leader. See that sweet jacket she got? That was nice. Yeah. One hand won't go. Bex is there. Two, two layups that McQueen has missed. Utah holding UCLA under 40% shooting. That'll help the Bruins. And that's Lena Zontag, the sophomore from Germany. Her third triple of the season. Peely was helping in on the post and left her wide open. You gotta make her hit another one before Lynn Roberts will adjust her defense. UCLA will push the other way. Yes, and to drop it off to Betts against only one defender who creates some space, but missed the layup. Both teams here in the first half doing a terrific job of taking away the opponent's number one option. I, I think Brenda Pantoya gave the flop signal. That would mean yeah. new rule in the yeah. game. Yep. And is that an offensive foul called on Utah? Number 22, I, I didn't I didn't think that Betts pushed off. I didn't think she lowered her shoulder. I definitely would believe that was a flop. I think the officials now at a dead ball are going to go over and discuss it. That would be a warning. You can get one the second time. That's a technical foul. Any delay of game. Uh, Kelsey can't wait to hear from Tara Vanderveer. And uh, this is what the officials were looking at during the timeout, and they chose not to upgrade the foul. So it just remains an offensive foul. Inadvertent to the face, apparently. 
And there was a warning on a flop as well. Next one would be free throws. Technical. Mm -hmm. Can Betts or Peely get things rolling on a turnover? Lauren rocks with it as they bring a triple team to her that time. I mean, you gotta make Betts play in a crowd. It, it's tough when she catches it that deep. She only has 10 assists on the season, so when she catches it down there, she's not looking to pass, she's looking to score. Corey Close works every day on those double teams with Betts. Vieta, there's the switch. Look at Betts guarding on the perimeter. Vieta looking for a bailout. Another missed layup. That one would have been a tough one from Wilkie. I mean, Betts is getting deep position. Brought that ball down, and that was trouble. Wait, did she go three seconds? Wow. That was quick. The stars are uh, are not yet shining tonight so far. Defense is doing a terrific job in taking them out of it. It's another break here for Peely, who's been on the bench a couple of times here in the first half. And another takeaway for the Bruins and a foul. So both teams have sort of lost their rhythm right here. Number one on Reese. And a little sloppy, a little choppy, a, a lot of whistles. Good hands by Sontag. Peely will return. UCLA trying to tie it up or take the lead for the first time tonight. Utah is led throughout. Jones on the drive, Betts, offensive stick back, got it. All even at 26, under five to go in the half. Really good weak side forward by 6-7 Betts. Going against 6-2 Peely. Oh, they are really struggling with the length and the quickness on the perimeter for UCLA. The UCLA has changed their ball screen coverage. They've gone to, to switching. Peely. That pass tipped. Under five on the shot clock. Johnson off the bounce. Collision underneath, and it's a shot clock violation. How about UCLA's defense? Been pretty good right now. The last couple of possessions, Beth, held Utah to one of six shooting and a forced three turnovers here in the second quarter. Both teams are really good cutters, and because they both have raised their level defensively and they're playing a little bit better ball pressure, a little bit more up the line, look for some backdoor opportunities. Osborne probes the baseline. Now into the paint, pulls up and hits it in the Bruins on a 13-4 run to grab the lead for the first time tonight on the road. out right now, looking to dribble and kick. There it is for Wilkie, got it! 68% on the season, assisted baskets for Utah. Right now, the ball's getting sticky. They gotta move. They've let UCLA dictate their shots right now. That triple put the Utes back in front by a point. Osborne, no. Jaquez cleans it up. Third in the nation in offensive rebounding percentage is UCLA. They crash, and their team speed doesn't give up much in transition when they crash. So they got good balance even though they crash the glass. McQueen kicks it back out to Peely, looking for her first bucket. Still, nothing dropping. Osborne finds a shooter, air ball. And now they'll push the other way, Kennedy McQueen. She'll pull and pop. Osborne goes, settle down. She puts the ball in her hands. 
As you saw before, a 2,000 point scorer for UCLA. I thought Charisma Osborne used to be known as a, a rebounded guard. She got a lot of points, like being scrappy and all that. She's really improved her offensive game. And what a career it has been for the grad student out of Moreno Valley, California, an honorable mention All-American last year. 2K plus, over 750 on the glass, 400 assists, 200 steals. Those are some good numbers coming into tonight. When they're on their game, Debbie, I mean, the combo of this backcourt and Betts, tough to tussle with. Utah doing a good job with them right now. But they got to get something going on this end. That's going to be on Osborne trying to fight over the top of the screen. Charisma Osborne. I think Osborne has accepted a role. You know, she has been a leading scorer. She's second right now. There's a lot of balance on this team. She came back because she wanted to improve her skill set, but she wanted to win. And they have done a nice job of doing that so far this year. 15 and one, four and one in the league. Number two in the country. Under two to go in the half. McQueen found some space. Six first half triples for Utah. Six threes and six twos. Back up by a couple. Plays for the Serbian Olympic team. Her second chance will get her to the line. She's good. I mean, she can impact. She can shoot the three. We've seen that. In Utah, we've been talking about them moving the ball, not letting it get stuck. This is an excellent job by Johnson to post up hard inside and McQueen to get her feet set outside the arc. That helps create space. Seven assists on 12 buckets for the number one assist team in the nation. Hey, our Super Tuesday comes your way tomorrow with action in the Big 12 and the ACC. First up, it's Oklahoma and Texas at 7 Eastern on ESPN. At the same time on ESPN 2, Florida State and Syracuse. The Syracuse women just upset Florida State's women. Can the men do the same? Florida State coming off a loss at home to Clemson and Syracuse with the buzzer beater in the dome over Miami on Saturday. Texas had the buzzer beater as well. Both sides asking for a foul on that physicality. And the pass ends up in the second row. That is nine first half turnovers now for Utah. UCLA ball. Both teams really cooled off this quarter. Their defenses have been better than their offenses. First time they go to the horn set, that's a moving screen. That's just the fourth foul called this half on UCLA. Got a two for one opportunity here for Utah. Get it back to the top for an open three. Foul's gonna be on Peely. Watch the hard second. Sorry about the hard drive to the baseline. McQueen, who's just hit one. Give a little heat check to the junior. Boy, as much as the fans would love to see Peely go off. I think the Utah staff would be ecstatic if they're going to the locker room with a lead and she's having an off night without a basket in the first half. You know what that means. The Sets others. up for an incredible second half for Peely. Remember, she's coming off a 37-point performance against Southern Cal in here on Friday night. That's one for two at the line. going to be on Osborne. Go a little go screen action at the top, and that's the second foul on Osborne trying to fight over a screen. That's her second personal foul. In this quarter. 
Cameron Brown, number 35, checks in now for UCLA. Hey, Corey Close is in, over there arguing. That's, yeah, well, I, I think she wants a moving, like the dribble handoff. You have to be stationary to do it. That's why a lot of teams go with the flip instead of the dribble handoff. Two second difference, shot and game clocks. Palmer. Healy sets the screen. Palmer driving against the 6 7 defender to the corner. No. And that'll do it for the first half of play. UCLA with its highest ranking in school history at number two, but they are down on the road tonight against Utah as we get you back to the studio with Kelsey and Rebecca. Well, Pat Summit passed away from Alzheimer's back in 2016, but her legacy includes the foundation that she and her son started that has already raised, I think, to date over $4 million to nonprofits who are all trying to not only find a cure for Alzheimer's, but also help the caregivers who are taking care of those that are also fighting that disease. And of course, we wear purple today, Debbie to honor Pat and the foundation and the fight against Alzheimer's. Uh, I am wearing a piece of clothing that Pat gave me. You know, I'd always say to Pat, you're never gonna wear the same thing twice. You know, she had a clothing allowance. She said, Antonella, you're never gonna wear this. It's too big. And I said, oh yeah, I'm gonna wear it. I can't think of a better way to honor her than to wear a piece of her clothing on the We Backpack Week. Um, but also, not only did she give me literally the shirt off her back, I was with her when she got a hole in one playing golf, and that was a, a memorable experience. And I also dropped her name on a state trooper in Kentucky and got out of a speeding ticket right after she had won a thousand games. Because I, I got to call the, the game where she went over a thousand wins. Well, on a, uh, a week where we see Tara Vanderveer move to number one all time, passing Mike Krzyzewski, Gino Oriema up there high on the list as well. Uh, it's also a moment to stop and remember the original OG, the one who really got the ball rolling, and that was Pat Summit. And how she would love to see the growth of the game. Young. Deja Young having a game. Three triples for the senior. That is their eighth three-pointer. They average 11 per game. That's the most in the country. Lauren Beck's working on Peely. And a foul on Alyssa. And that will be her third. Well, there was a lot of contact right there. How about Corey Close going right inside to Betts, putting some pressure on Peely with those two fouls. You see her reach right there. Looks like she lost a little balance, too. An and one opportunity for Lauren Betts right out of the gate. I don't see Lynn Roberts looking to make a substitution either. You know, can she trust her senior with those three fouls? Peely never got in rhythm in the first half. She has not fouled out of a game this season, so she stays on the floor. She's 0 for 3 in the game. She averages just south of 23 points a game. And she shoots 63% from the floor. It's one of the best in the nation. Very uncharacteristic, just three shot attempts. Tries to drive on Betts. Has it stripped underneath. UCLA throws a triple team at her. Ugalic, who led the way in that first half for the Bruins, the kick out to Charisma. Rebounded by Jenna Johnson. McQueen. Again, that five out look to keep those driving lanes open. Under 10 on the shot clock. McQueen. They swing it back to Young. Another open left and another triple. Come on. Are you kidding me? Go ahead, Deja Young, and shoot till your arm falls off. Four triples in the game. She only had 14 all season coming in. Betts. 
goes away from the double, but walks with it. That is Lauren's fourth turnover. Deja Young spotting up outside the arc. UCLA has not guarded the three-point line very well. Four triples is the most that she's had in a game this season. And they're moving the ball well now, up to eight assists on 13 buckets after that slow start. McQueen all the way down the lane. Time out, UCLA. The driving lanes are opened up because the three-point shooting has spread out the UCLA defense. I wouldn't like to say that Deja Young is the fifth option on the floor most nights, but guess what? She really is, and she got started early, knocking down triples in the first half. Four threes by Deja Young to lead all scores in the game with 14 points. It's what a senior does at home, trying to pull the upset over number two. Season high scoring for her. She's one shy of her career high from downtown. They are outscoring UCLA from beyond the arc, 27 to six. And they're flirting again with a double digit lead. Good drive there from Osborne. I mean, really good ATO by Corey Close. It's the same hard post up by Betts, but this time it's a decoy. And Charisma with that right hand going down the right lane. Let's see if the experienced guards start to take charge a little bit because Betts is seeing double teams, triple teams. She's turned it over inside. So Osborne takes charge. Well, keep in mind, I mean, she only has 10 assists, so if you throw it in there, she's probably trying to make a play. And right here, no help on the dribble handoff. That middle third is where Charisma Osborne does a lot of damage. Young. Oh, she's sowing some oats today. Better bump her up on the uh, scouting report. <laughs> Opposing coaches. Hawkins short. Followed her own miss. Count it. I'm a big believer as a shooter in following your shot only when you know it's off. And Hawkins, who is a tremendous athlete, and a glue player and part of that toughness around UCLA's offense. Does a nice job right there, creating an and one opportunity off the boards. Why only when you know that you've, you've missed it? Because a good shooter knows how they've missed it. There's only four ways you can miss it. Long, short, left, or right. And if you're a shooter that knows how to self-correct and has muscle memory, then you know when it's off. Foul outside. Foul, Drew's number 23, Gabriela Hawkins. That's her first person. That'll be the first on Hawkins. Substitution here, Betts will check out and Iwala will come back on. And Peely. And Alyssa, okay, crank it up. Here we go, Peely. We're not gonna have the matchup yep. that you want right here. You're an All-American for a reason. Now you gotta start playing like one. She has struggled to get up a shot over Betts. Looking to post up. Iwala keeps her away. Now Alyssa comes to get it. Off the bounce. Spins into a double team and it's blocked. Second one blocked and now a foul. Good job by Reese Ross staying on the glass. Peely spins into the double. Reese Ross for your use. We see so many incredible scores around the country. Peely's one of them. And we saw in the loss over the weekend, Iowa, you know, 45 for Caitlin Clark. Questions, though, around. And there you see our NBA uh, doubleheader on Wednesday, Suns Mavericks. It's NBA Rivals Week on ABC. And then it's Oklahoma City and Victor Wembenyama and San Antonio. Back to my last thought, though. How do the others respond if the star has an off night? 
going to be critical for teams like this, right? And the others yes. are responding so well tonight for Utah. I mean, they're built to score. Uh, this is an offensive team from Utah that they have the green light. They're expected to take shots. They're unselfish on how they move the ball. When you have a 68% of your baskets assisted, you play off the pass a lot. Vieira in the field. And there it is. She finally breaks the seal. It's her first field goal of the night. One of the things that we talked to Peely about at shoot around today was her awareness around the, the rim. Like, I think she has really good court awareness about where she is when she catches, reading the double team. She's got to make a decision quicker, though. UCLA has done a really nice job on her. Shot clock winding down, under five to go in the third. Osborne got to make a move. Good defense by Ross to bother the shot. Vieira, off the mark. Well, yep. they, they really needed a Peely touch there because Bex is getting set to check yeah. back into the game. I, I mean, Peely is working to set screens, but she's not moving off the screen, like either pop, short roll, or roll to the rim, but you gotta do something to impact the space for your team. Huge looking for more of this right here, her first bucket of the night. Lauren Betts, the 6'7 transfer from Stanford, shoots 69% from the floor. All Utah has done all night is make her play in a crowd. Now keep in mind, she only has 10 assists on the season. So they're playing behind and they're relying on help from the perimeter. Sometimes they bring it post to post. They've been mixing it up and they've made it challenging. Watch this play right here. She's wide open. Throw the pass to her lead hand and lead her to the bucket. Instead, the pass comes to the middle of her body and allows Utah time to collapse. She's got a big 6-7 target up there. Lead her to the basket. Coming in averaging 16 a night. She's got the top field goal percentage in the country. Osborne, tough shot and then over the back. Sense a little frustration from Charisma Osborne and Kiki Rice. They haven't gotten it going yet, right? I mean, these are two players that combined to have a five to one assist ratio. Right? They're very good at making decisions with the ball. They haven't shot the ball well tonight. They are uh, both sitting on a negative plus minus so far in the ball game. Utah has led almost the entire time tonight. Another three ball. This would be number 10. Good AT over there, Lynn Roberts. Nice drift pass on the baseline. The response from Hakez. You got to go with who you trust right here. I think Corey Close trusts Hakez. When the tough plays need to happen, I don't think she minds putting the ball in Hakez's hands. Healy stepping out for three. Weak side for Dugalich. Oh, Hakez wanted it. I mean, look at her run the floor, and it passes out her feet. Rice on the drive, offensive foul. Healy takes the charge and may have taken a, a shot to the noggin as well. Works her way to her feet. Wow, I don't know about that. Ooh. I mean, remember that restricted arc doesn't matter right. anymore in the women's game, but it appeared she was sliding left. You got to establish legal guarding position. I don't think she had obtained that. Avoided her fourth foul. That was a critical moment right there for Utah. I mean, Lynn Roberts has made it very public uh, how she has felt about officiating in the Pac-12 this season. Johnson tried to scoop it up, won't go. That's, has it taken away? Hustle play for Wilkie. Peely off the bounds. Yeah. 
Rice on the ground. Five and one. Now that is a brilliant move by Kiki Rice. In transition before Utah gets set, Peely makes the basket. Layden getting up to get back down the floor. Plenty of time, Debbie, for these two offenses to rescue this game from a defensive <laughs> struggle. <laughs> Rice, former high school player of the year. Well, you know what happens in conference play, right? I mean, the possession shrink, the court shrinks. You've got to be able to execute at a high level. Boy, and just as important, she took the crowd out of it after that nice peely bucket. And I like the full court pressure by Corey Close. You've got to change the rhythm of the game, right? Sometimes you can stimulate, stimulate your offense by changing what you do defensively. This also sets up for an opportunity to go back door for Utah. Well, they're playing again without bet, so let's see if Utah goes to Peely. Anytime somebody throws a situational press on, I would be ready for that backdoor look. Backside scoring against the pressure. Jenna Johnson at the line. So Jenna Johnson will head to the free throw line. These are just the third and fourth free throws of the night for Utah. Don't forget, perhaps the biggest game of the regular season on deck Thursday night. LSU hosting South Carolina, the defending national champions taking on the Gamecocks who are still unbeaten. The last team standing in that regard. Such a big game. In fact, college game day is going to be there. Coverage will start at 7 o'clock on ESPN. Jones on the drive and the drop off. What a play by Jones. See, right now, the last couple of possessions, UCLA has been very aggressive off the bounce. Good counter for Utah. That's Izzy Palmer. Game speeding up a little bit. UCLA needs to speed the game up some. They've been pretty good all season at accelerating through their actions, but Utah's defense has really done a nice job protecting inside out. Watch this drive right here and drop off by Jones. Brilliant play. And on the other side, nobody stops the ball in transition. Palmer gets to the rim. Osborne, baseline jumper is good. A minute and a half to go here in the third. Tipped away by Jones. Brown on the run. Missed the layup. Jones tried to clean it up, but she missed it. Third chance for UCLA, and this one goes for Jaquez. UCLA hasn't done it uh, pretty. They have been really tough and gritty about the way they've scored the last few buckets. It's been off the bounce, getting in the paint, offensive rebounding. Well, there seems to be a little confusion on this possession for Utah. Really calling for it inside. Good ball pressure here from UCLA. Wilkie will have to jack from deep. I'm going to have to give my tape measure out for that one. That was deep. You know, Beth, when in doubt, just shoot it. Utah. Cranking it up from downtown. Queen. They hold it for one. They do not.
Yeah, you know, we got a good one brewing here in Salt Lake City. 11 three-pointers for Utah. And a UCLA defense that usually holds opponents to 38% shooting while the Utes are over 50%. And they're doing it on a quiet night for Alyssa Peely. The rest of the Utes have been stellar. Held ball. We'll go the other way. I mean, the collapse to the post has been outstanding. They have forced the post game of UCLA to play in a crowd all night. A couple yeah. nights ago. Go ahead, Debbie. No, I was just saying the double's coming so quickly on the pass that it, it's such a crowd that the UCLA players can't move. Betts has not been able to be effective tonight. Neither now Sontag will get a chance. Neither star has been given a chance to shine. Good defense on both of Betts and Peely. Five on the shot clock, Vieta. Tries to circle back around and had to chuck that one. Good D by Jones. Jumps in the passing lane there, or the driving lane. Hakez runs the floor well, receives, missed it. Knocked around in a foul. Wow. It's about to say UCLA a couple of nights ago coming off their biggest ranked win ever. They beat number three Colorado. And how about this? Utah as it stands right now tonight. This would be their biggest win ever against a ranked opponent. Number two, UCLA. Welcome to the Pac-12 party this year. And a foul on the shooter. Foul on the youth, number 34, Deja Young. That's number two on Deja. You do not want to foul the jump shooter. Charisma Osborne shooting so, two. Osborne to the line to shoot a couple. Talk about UCLA and what a season it's been for them. They are on the brink uh, in the next uh, six to eight weeks, Debbie, of trying to make some history. They won a national championship in 1978. That was during the AIAW days. They have never reached a Final Four since then. They have won Pac-12 championship. That was 25 years ago in the regular season. Yeah. They have a chance to make some history with this group, one of their most balanced teams ever. We'll find out a lot about their guts here in the next nine minutes. Well, this is the toughest road trip in the Pac-12, right? And they played a tough game to the last couple of minutes against Colorado, where they had a big fourth quarter. Yeah, they had a huge fourth quarter. Number two, Vienna. And Osborne had 22 in that game. Here in the fourth quarter. Foul's gonna be on Vieta. Quite frankly, I think both offenses have operated better for UCLA without bets on the floor and for Utah without Peely. Osborne trying to ice the screen, which means keep Osborne on this side of the floor. See Young getting over the top of that. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. Going to call an illegal screen. Well, both fan bases have a case to argue both these last two fouls at either end of the floor. I mean, the whole time you see Young, she's icing, keeping Osborne on the same side. Were her feet outside her shoulders? Because that would be an illegal screen by rule. UCLA is going to get it right back on the turnover. Osborne. And now another foul on the screen. UCLA. Dukalich is really. She is upset. Corey Close is going to get her out. She's having a hard time right here. She better be careful. Corey Close trying to hold on to her, trying to calm her down. I like a little feisty. It's gotten a little feisty here in the fourth. Utah is a team right now that's on the host bubble. Bracketology says they're a 16 seed. Utah missed an opportunity. Peely had a mismatch inside. Peely off the one-handed ball fake. The drive hard off the back. Offensive rebound, Young. 
Young. Alyssa's going to get another look. Check that down. Do your job of Peely to get back in the play. And on the shot clock, Rice into the lane, a step through and a block, and it goes. Yes. Number 23, Maddie Wilkie. Fouls on Wilkie. That's her second. And this is the second chance tonight for Kiki to get an old-fashioned three. You see what's happening with UCLA, right? It's it's Kiki Rice and Charisma Osborne and Haquez taking over right now. And they need to step up. And as much as we say that, Beth, it is a two-possession game yes. for UCLA. Healy backing in the defender. Rice will push and take it one on three. And Young has the rebound, and Huck has had to go over her back. UCLA number 23, Gabriella Huckes. Number two. That was a weight room play. Well, she ripped it away from Huckes to draw that foul. Otherwise, I, I thought that was going to be a jump ball. Taken away by Jantak. On the run, Hakez. And a foul. I think it would really behoove UCLA to push this pace. See if they can get a couple of transition buckets. You know, we talked about it in the third quarter. I thought Corey Clance Close was trying to pick up the pace a little. But I think she was doing it with her defense. Now they're trying to pick up the pace with their offense. We're getting close to what we call game slippage time. It's who executes the best. Pac-12 basketball is going to be like this all season. There's too many good teams. You have to execute late. KYP, you got a no personnel on the other side. I always think the teams that move the ball the best in this, these moments in the game are the ones that have the best shot opportunities. And these are two of the most efficient offenses in the country. Six and a half to go. Can Utah pull out its biggest win in school history against the second-ranked Bruins? Peely looking for an avenue and draws the foul. Her second trip to the line tonight. Peely playing with those three fouls, picked up that third early in the third quarter. And now with three fouls, this is where you can stay really aggressive, right? Because you're not coming out. Okay, so you've got two fouls to play with with 6.20 left. That's the way you have to look at it. Started out at USC, where she was the Pac-12 freshman of the year, and really found a home here in Salt Lake City. Has become a big fan favorite. Led the Pac-12 in scoring a year ago. Juju Watkins, the freshman at USC, on top of the charts right now. Second in the nation in scoring is Juju. Osborne takes the handoff from Betts. Got the mismatch inside. Betts. Hot she rips it away. It takes too long to recognize it. You got to throw it in there as soon as she shapes up. And put it on a rope, like zip it in there. Peely around and out. Betts has it, and now they've got five on four. Akez. Jones for three. Short. Chased after it, and it went by her. I'm 
not taking the air out of the ball if I'm Utah. I'm keeping the pressure on right now. Vieta off the bounce and the pass to no one in particular. Here comes Osborne with a breakaway opportunity. And the lay-in for Charisma. Corey Close putting the full court pressure on. Cameron Brown, Cameron Brown replaces Zontak. I think this is a defensive possession right here, getting Cameron Brown on. Kiki Rice will check back in on the next dead ball. Drifts back. Healy with Hakka's honor. Clock's winding down. McQueen on the drive. Young blocked. Comes back to her. And that's a shot clock violation. Shot clock violation. We've got a media timeout. Things tightening up a little bit here. Four and a half to go. Utah in front of UCLA, 67-62. Night College Game Day will be there at 7 Eastern, tip at 8 Eastern on ESPN. And uh, we could see an over-under of about 180, if I'm reading that right. They can score. Take the over. Take they the over. They can score. <laughs> How do you beat South Carolina, Debbie? No Not easy. To do it. You got to have post play to match up. You have to have balanced scoring to rotate, move the ball. So they uh, have to cover all five shooters. You got to have three levels of defense, ball pressure, rotation, and rim protection. You have to defend one on one. It helps you keep stay with them on the glass. And a late bucket getter. And a late bucket getter. Someone inside 10 on the shot clock that can make a play. It's not easy because their defense is elite. And they might have the uh, SEC Player of the Year in Tahina Pow Pow, the transfer from Oregon, she who's would, running that point and shooting those threes. She would have my vote right now. I think she's South Carolina's most productive and best player and the biggest difference in their offense. UCLA, that one rattles in and out. Now also, I'm a big fan of Bree Hall. I think she is a difference maker. As we stand right now in the Pac-12, Stanford and Colorado are both six and one. UCLA only with one loss. Utah's in the middle of the pack, and they are in need of some top 25 net wins to boost their resume. Be a big one tonight. Good D by UCLA off the break. Timeout. Nice catch inside. Dugalich in and out. Rice kept it alive. Hell ball will stay at this end. Here's what uh, you talked to Charlie this morning, right? Yeah, I did. We're texting back and forth? Yeah, Charlie. He's on it. UCLA will stay on the top line as a one. Even if they lose, according to Charlie, they've got those five net top 25 wins we talked about. And Utah sitting on the 16, uh, uh, number 16 on the four seed line right now. This could improve their standing. You think they're worthy of three ones right now? Charlie thinks so. UCLA, no. Colorado, and Stanford. I don't, I don't see that happening. Um, I think the ACC is going to garner one uh, because the ACC has the most ranked teams. They have a really competitive race with seven teams ranked in the top 25 right now. Hopefully for Stanford's sake, they get Cameron Brink back. She got dinged up the other night. And once again, congratulations to Tara Vanderveer, the all-time winningest coach in college basketball history. We will see those clubs in the next six weeks on the ESPN Network. Shot clock is under 10. Rice on the drive. Six for the Bruins to work with right here. Yeah, but this is where UCLA is really good. Look for the lob to Betts in the middle. We're gonna make this a one possession there game. There it is. And there is the lob, and it's blocked from behind by the 5'10", Kennedy McQueen. What a play for Utah. Peely probing, spinning to the left off the mark. Jaquez surrounded and fouled. It's the third on Vieta. 
The one that has to be careful right now is Rice. She's the only one, Kiki Rice for UCLA with four, and she and will actually depart. Yep. For Cameron Brown, either. defensive possession, Beth. Going to the line, Kiki will come back in on an offensive possession. Well, with these two offenses, we thought it might come down to who can make a defensive stop, but it may come down to who can hit that clutch bucket the way the two defenses have been playing tonight. Full court coming. Good ball handlers for Utah. I was kind of thinking the opposite. I was thinking last with the ball. Another three! That's a dozen for the Utes! That kid can flat out play. We watched her in here on Friday night make shots against Southern Cal. She's going to be a good one. Transfer from Wisconsin, where she set the freshman three-point record in Madison. Look how much she can help off of Brown. Like, she's in the middle of the paint. Brown's in the corner. Haquez for three, go! I'm telling you, toughness. That kid, uh, Haquez, knows how to make a play. That's who you trust if you're Corey Close. One possession game under two minutes to go in Salt Lake City. Okay, are they saying that Duda Lee has to come oh. out of the game? Lynn Roberts is like, why did you stop the game? Was there a safety issue? Well, that allowed Kiki Rice to get back in. Yes, it did. Johnson to inbound. Will Peely have a chance here without bets on the floor? Charisma Osborne fronting her in the lane. McQueen back to Wilkie. Chance for UCLA to tie this thing up. Rice drives, got it. So good. It, with some contact, too. And that's why stopping the game and letting her back in the game is what Lynn Roberts was mad about. One point, Utah. A critical turnover by or uh, by U Utah. Two on one right here. Brown high off the glass in transition. The second half, especially the fourth quarter, UCLA has been much aggressive, much more aggressive off the bounce. And not having Benson there has actually opened up the driving lanes for the Bruins. Down double digits in the second half. They have just taken the lead for only the second time tonight as you check out the vitals. Both sides have timeouts. Neither has fouls to give. Utah with the arrow. And in women's basketball, you can use a timeout to advance to midcourt. 53.9 to go. Utah all night long on the brink of their biggest upset in school history against the number two team in the country. And the Bruins fight back. Lynn Roberts went through a series of late game, out of bounds, sideline out of bounds plays in practice at shoot around. Look for Peely on the slice cut. There she is. Down on the block. Looking for a seam and it's blocked. What a play by Zontok. Got to play good D right here if you're Utah. Timeout. Corey Close. They executed that play very well in shoot around today and UCLA knew it was coming. Huge block for Lena. 
and the defense for the Bruins has held Utah to two of 12 shooting in this fourth quarter. No space, good D, straight up, walled up. Peely, three of 13 on the night, 10 points. Four Utes in double digits, four Bruins in double digits. And now who do you like for a touch here for UCLA? I like Kiki Rice, downhill, driving in the paint, making the decision with the ball. I like Haquez in the corner. Spray it out to the corner. Opportunity for her to drive. Debbie, they will stay with the smaller lineup. Yeah. It looks like Betts is out. I, like I said, Beth, I think they've played better without Betts because she's clogged it up inside. Now you've got to play straight up and not help so much. you got to keep UCLA in front right here for Utah. You've got three timeouts, so you can still, you can advance the ball. With possession and a one-point lead. 24 on the shot clock. We get it to Rice. Hawkes to the corner. Well, they like this throwback off the screen. Kiki trying to stay out of the double team, and uh, Corey Close did not like how that was looking. It's a good timeout because usually in that situation, Beth Kiki. Rice comes off that screen for a pop and a th throwback. They've run that clear out two man naked side offense a lot this season. And this time she rejects the screen. Timeout Corey Close because she needs to make sure they make a good decision. And now you've only got four seconds on the shot clock and you have to inbound it. The other thing is I might consider putting bets in for the lob right here because you're going to inbound the ball on the baseline. This is how we got here. The three ball effective for Utah and a scrappy second half to rally from down 10 for the Bruins. Their guards have taken charge here in this fourth quarter again with Rice and Osborne. And Hawk has tremendous toughness for what may be the best six person in the conference, if not the country. There's the situation. UCLA now out of timeouts. Okay, you gotta screen hard, you gotta cut hard. And for Utah, let's see if they switch on everything. Utah is really hoping to work a five-second yeah. violation right here on the inbound. I, I want great pressure on the ball. It's a spot throw in. We really take the vision away to the middle of the floor. That is a significant time right there because, of course, if Utah were to grab the lead late, UCLA does not have a timeout to advance the ball. But you know, Corey Close knows her guards have been downhill, especially in the fourth quarter. What a game. Betts does not come in to take a lob. Yada on the ball, the smallest player on the floor. Four on the shot clock. Hawkes. Osborne, the second screener through short, does not touch iron. And is it a held ball before a violation? It is, and it goes to Utah. Wow, I think they would rather have the shot clock violation so they can maintain possession of the ball. Uh, you know, if they tie it up again. Let's see if Lynn Roberts is not going to take a timeout here. The officials are discussing that very thing, Beth. They're going to give him a timeout because there's zero on the shot clock. Shot clock violation. No, wait, no, wait, no, wait. Now no. they're saying now jump ball. Brenda Pantoja changing her mind now. She gave the, sh the signal to the bent to the scores table, shot clock. Then she went, my bad, jump ball. Which would mean, let's see, that, that would be Utah ball down at the other end of the floor. 15.7 to play. Remember Alyssa Peely last year? A buzzer beater to beat UCLA on a 23.8 night. She knocked down a shot with 0.8 seconds to play. 
So now Lynn Roberts, after the officials decide, now the timeout starts. Well, let's take you back to last season. And that showdown, Utah and UCLA. It was a good one. It was back and forth. It was neck and neck. And then it was Peely time down the stretch. As she goes to work on the Bruins. And a two-point win as she nailed that one late. So I'm guessing they're going to look her way again here. Down one with the ball. They might run the same thing. Triple stagger and then Peely on the slice. Johnson to inbound. They put the big girl on her. Two cutters coming here. Dugalich defending. They finally get it into Vieta. Peely coming up to get it. The drive into the lane. It's blocked and it's taken by UCLA. And a foul. Was that Angela Dugalich? And her buddy Zontak in the lane with another block of Peely. Well, Lynn Roberts is not happy. You're still going to have an opportunity here. Going to the line. Even if, that's right. Number three. Even if she gets both, one possession game. You can call timeout to advance it. Cameron Brown all season is three of six from the free throw line. You better be ready to box out if you're Utah. You better squeeze Dukalic. If they need a three, remember, they make more per game than any team in the country. Missed the second. Quick timeout on the Peely rebound, so they can advance to midcourt. Not, did any time come off? No, but I think point three has to come off, right? Yeah, she, Brenda's pointing to it, right? Peely down in the far corner. Switch everything. They're going to get it to Vieta. She'll drive. And she'll score to tie it up. Osborne, the heave to win it. What a play. A perfect execution. Inesh Vieta, when all eyes were on Peely, she found a way to the rim. They're all side. 72-72 overtime in Salt Lake City. Overtime tonight is presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. A thriller here in the Pac-12, number two UCLA, number 16 Utah. Beth Mowens, Debbie Antonelli courtside. We got five extra minutes to play with. Kiki Rice, the only player with four for UCLA. And Alyssa Peely has played with those three personal fouls almost the entire second half. She picked up a third early.
Let's take a look at our wild recap brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. And here is Vieta with the game tying bucket unimpeded along the baseline. She came off of two screens to the rim. No help. Very well diagrammed and executed. All right, so UCLA will go back to bets now to start out in the OT. Uh, she's going to win the jump ball. Win the jump that. ball, I would think. Yes. Jenna uh, Johnson didn't even jump the, at the uh, beginning of the game. 6'7 versus 6'2. Never set your D even. Worry about. Akez. Osborne looking for three. Rebounded by McQueen. Dugalich and Rice are the other Bruins out there to start the OT. McQueen, Johnson, Peely, Vieta, and Wilkie in Rice for Utah. UCLA switching on that ball screen action. Wilkie lost it on the drive. Oh, she did try. And Rice walked with it. Another heads up play by Vieta. Substitutions now. Brown and Zontok coming on for Rice and Betts. They don't want Kiki picking up number five on this end of the floor. Yeah, she's been going offense, defense with yep. Brown and, and Rice most of the fourth, two, well, the last well, three or four minutes of the fourth quarter. Block called on Zontok. That's her third. And McQueen will tow the strike. And Kiki immediately comes back for UCLA. Kiki Rice, number one, checks in. And Kennedy McQueen is going McQueen's to a 75% shooter. Here's First trips two. tonight. The team is eight for eight. A dozen triples tonight, the story for Utah. Gutty fourth quarter comeback, the story for UCLA. Really trying to keep Osborne, forcing her weak, forcing her left. Dugalich. Looking for some help, can't find any. Four on the shot clock for the Bruins. You know what, Vieta did a really nice job there playing zone after the dribble penetration brought the double. She had two players that she was playing in between. Osborne wraps it around the other side. UCLA ties it up. Vieta will try for three. Why not? Her first three. Five different Utah players have hit a triple. Rice, good cut by Jaquez and a foul, and that's number four on Peely. I mean, Peely's gonna make sure that she doesn't make the layup. It's a hard foul, but it's a play on the ball. Melissa Peely, that's number four on Melissa. Cameron Brown, number 35. This is where the balance of Utah comes in, right? Because they've got the floor spaced out. They're good at getting in the gap. They probe nicely off the bounce. They get you late in rotation, and then they drive it. That's what they've been doing here in the second half. UCLA now 18 for 23 at the line. Great night for Gabriella. Gets the second. Her 18 leads the way for the Bruins. In fact, leads all scores tonight off the bench. How about taking uh, Rice off the bounce right here? 
Rice defending with four fouls. Oh, Peely had an open lane and gave the ball up. McQueen blocked and a foul. McQueen off the bounce. I mean, she brings the ball right to the defender. You got to go with left hand when you're driving left there. You know, here's something I've seen a lot of players are doing, though, Matt. They all fall to the ground after they drive to the floor. A couple of times, UCLA's been able to transition and break off of having numbers because they're slow to get up. Stay on your feet. You can bring a sub in after the made free throw. They didn't hear the horn or the horn didn't go. Yeah, that was Nicole Leon did a good job. She heard the horn and made sure they got the sub on. Rice on the drive and she was bodied the whole way and a foul on the queen. I mean, Kiki Rice and Charisma Osborne can turn a corner. That's her third. Free throw shooting contest is broken out here in the overtime. And Corey Close and Lynn Roberts digging a little deeper into their offensive playbook here in the overtime. We've seen it. That's a set and a play in transition we haven't seen out of UCLA yet. Rice gets the first. a couple of trips, just 50% for UCLA here in the OT. McQueen. Drops it off for Wilkie. 10 on the shot clock. Really good ball pressure by UCLA. She hoist. UCLA's got to accelerate through their stuff. Can't let the ball get stuck. Osborne underneath. Tough shot. Rebound. Peely and a foul. Dukalich has position. But the ball bounces out beyond her reach. Peely there to clean it up. Now Alyssa will go to the free throw line at the other end. They can stretch this lead out. 2-0-1 to play. Utes have never beaten a team ranked this high. The Bruins just jumped up a few spots to number two in the country behind undefeated South Carolina. Remember, you can see the Gamecocks at LSU. Primetime Thursday night with college game day in Baton Rouge. Healy knocks down the first. Pac-12 after dark is producing tonight. And Peely will depart. Fourteen points, six rebounds for her. Small lineup on the floor for Utah. Rice trying to hook up on the back door with Hawkins. I like it though. I like the idea of going back door. I've been looking for it all game out of UCLA. Especially without bets on the floor. Utes right now outscoring UCLA 11 to 4 in this overtime. Good switching. Good cut by Hawkes to the rim and a find by Rice. The eight is going to be fouled on the inbound here by Jones. Foul called on the hold, Lyndon Jones. Jones is 
Her first trip to the line, Beth. As a point guard, she's only a 64% free throw shooter. That's their first free throw miss of this OT. And their first miss of the ball game, 15 of 16 tonight. Looking for a turnover. Rice walked with it. I mean, she lost the handle on it, and then she went to the ground and picked it up. Healy will check back in. They're trying to run the secondary action right here with two-man game with Osborne and Kiki Rice. It's a late whistle, but it's the right whistle. Full court pressure. Daisha Young would be the worst free throw shooter, and that's why Lynn Roberts has her on the bench right now. Down the wire. Working that clock. They need to stop right here at UCLA. This would be a big play for them right here. Still a two possession game. Shot clock winding down. McQueen off the bounce. McQueen gets her shoulders by the defender. She hasn't missed her laps in the second half. UCLA's got a hustle. Jones looking for three, and she hits it. Jones for the Bruins. Final minute of overtime. Vieta going to be tough to catch. And they just do get it. Got a foul back here in the backcourt. More free throws coming for Anesh. They're going to have to look at the clock. On the Bruins. Boy, is this Pac-12 conference going to be some, <laughs> some kind of fun? <laughs> hey, this Second has been half great. of the season. It's been great. Uh, unless perhaps you're one of the coaches. You guys so <laughs> Sleepless nights nice around this league. Good job, Utah fans. You think Tara Vanveer got any sleep last night? I hope not. I don't think so. Hope that was a fun celebration. Well, Corey Close was telling us at shoot around today, she was one of Tara's first campers when she took yeah. over at Stanford. And she credits Tara and her staff for giving her the confidence as a youngster who, in her words, was too short and too slow, but said, hey, you can do it. You got the heart, you got the guts to do it. She never forgot that. And Tara, who has just given so much back to the game over the years, obviously has taken plenty with those 1,203 wins. Yeah. Well, <laughs> she's, always, she's always carried the banner for West Coast basketball. Yeah. All right, so we got 48.9 to go here in the overtime. Still a two-possession game, but Utah has some free throws coming. This was Vieta tying it up with 1.5 to go in regulation. And now into the OT, she hit her first three of the day. She's made some big plays for them, the Peely stick back. And so they have the advantage. <laughs> Terrific atmosphere tonight at the Huntsman Center. Gianna Neepkins, who is that ACL that you mentioned, or that foot injury. Looked at Vieta and told her to follow through. Look at the free throws. Second half and OT. They've cranked it up. The timing was adjusted, by the way. 51.7 seconds as she hits the three. See, this one makes it a three possession game. UCLA has been running that secondary up the right side of the floor with Kiki Rice. What a job by the Utah guards tonight. You can get a quick two here, Beth. Instead, they're going to steal, and look who it is. Vieta again making a play. 
She has made some tough plays here to finish off this game for UCL or for Utah. Gets the deflection there and then the steal. Hawkes with a foul. They are working on a second top 10 upset this weekend after the blowout win over USC. And now the three possession lead in overtime over UCLA. Well, the men won last night over five and one Oregon, Utah men. Big weekend here in Salt Lake City. Dugal Leach, desperation three. And that might do it. Let's see if U UCLA will obviously try for the steal and then do they start fouling. Peely comes back in for the Utes. Can't get beat over the top here. It would appear too that the Utes will be the first team this season to out-rebound UCLA. Number one in the country at plus 18, their rebound margin. And the Utes are gonna get them on the glass. And Peely will head to the line. That's number four for I think well, Corey Close's decision to, to not play bets allowed them to come back in the game after down double digits because it opened up the floor for her guards for some driving lanes. And then Lynn Roberts, the trust in her backcourt with Peely not having her best night. Yet she's on the free throw line to finish it off for Utah. Well, this is good news for Colorado and Stanford because their lead over everyone else atop the Pac-12 will now be at two games in the loss column. For one game over UCLA, two games over everybody else. Utah enjoying its largest lead now of the night here in the OT. Osborne, short, Rice, straight, and a foul. And they're on their feet now in Salt Lake. Been a great environment tonight. Here's a look at the standings as of right now. This would give UCLA that second loss. And this would give Utah a much needed top 25 net win. Their yeah. second of the season, their second of the weekend. Big boost. Charlie Cream's got his pencil working right now without a racer on top of it. Lynn Roberts is saying, get us off the host bubble. <laughs> Enjoy it, Utah. You're witnessing history. 22.8 seconds away from upsetting the highest ranked opponent in school history. We're seeing tremendous star power around the country. We're seeing the game growing in places where it hasn't always been a top priority from fan bases. Huge crowds turning out. 18,000 at Ohio State. Almost 19,000. This weekend, the Ohio State University. Don't forget that. Huge upset win for them. Congrats yep. to the Buckeyes this weekend. Overtime win for them at home. Buckeye Nation showed up. Get some rest now the next few next few days and get ready for game day on Thursday night in Baton Rouge. What is Moki gonna wear? Huge showdown looming with South Carolina undefeated Gamecocks and the defending national champion LSU Tigers. And that'll do it. After UCLA forces overtime, Utah takes over in the extra session. Huge.
huge, huge back-to-back for Utah. The Utes beat the highest-ranked opponent they've ever beaten, 94-81, the final in overtime. Utah over UCLA. From Salt Lake City, Beth Bowens, Debbie Antonelli. See you Thursday night as we send you off now to the Australian Open.